1 Corinthians chapter 2. Watch carefully as I read verses 11 through 16. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Now, I can pretty well tell you sometimes how Hobie thinks and how Hobie acts. How can I tell you that? Because I'm a man. And he's a man. So, it's what he says. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? So I can pretty well identify with what he does because I know what I do. I can pretty well identify with what he thinks because I know how I think as a man. Then he said, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Ah, now the Spirit of God is different from the Spirit of man. Watch verse 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, we didn't receive a secular humanist spirit, but the Spirit which is of God, watch, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, that is, from the Word of God. Now watch. But the natural man, that is, the unsaved man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual, that is, he that has been saved, judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? Well, no one has been able to instruct God. He says, but we have the mind of Christ. Where do we have the mind of Christ? In the Scriptures. And as we take the Spirit of God, as He indwells us, and we listen to Him and we submit to the Word of God, we have the mind of Christ. Now listen. What's the Bible say in 1 John 4 and verse 17? Because as He is, so are we in this world. If we are to act the way Christ acted, we must think the way Christ thought. We must have the mind of Christ. The fourth application is this. All godly Christians make the will of God not their own lust and desires, the rule of their lives and actions. Let me say that again. It's very simple. All godly Christians make the will of God, not their own lust and desires, the rule of their lives and actions. Did you know that mortification is demanded in Scripture? Colossians 3 and verse 5 says, Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon this earth. The word mortify is where we get the word mortician from. It means to make dead. Our lusts, our desires that are wicked, our sinful delights have been crucified with Christ and therefore we're to reckon them dead and no longer live to those lusts but live to the will of God. What's that mean? It means that you and I should always, it may be slow at first, but it means that we should be slowly but surely Constantly and continually developing the mind of Christ. How do we develop the mind of Christ? Because as we study the Word, as we hear the Word taught, as we hear the Word explained, as we hear the Word preached, we bring our lives into conformity to that Word. And we learn to think biblically and scripturally when we Here's a subject, I don't care if it's abortion, I don't care if it's sodomy, I don't care if it's fraud, I don't care what it is. We say, let's see what the Word of God says, and my attitude toward that subject will be based upon Scripture. I'll give you a good, clear illustration of what it does not mean to have the mind of Christ. Presidential candidate Howard Dean said that it was his Christian faith that led him to embrace sodomite marriages. My dear friend, may I tell you, he does not have the mind of Christ. For had he had the mind of Christ, he would said with the Word of God that he that 
life of mankind, as with womankind, is to be put to death. Because that's what the Bible teaches. If you have a mind of Christ, you think biblically, you think scripturally, you think accurately. Now let me tell you something, folks. What error cannot stand is exposure. What a lie cannot stand is the truth. And the greatest weapon that you and I have at our disposal is learning to think biblically. Have you ever stopped to entertain this thought? If you know what the Bible teaches, you're not going to be deceived. You're not going to be led astray by all these promises of the politicians, the New World Order. You follow me? You won't be. Why? Because you know the truth based upon the Word of God. You have the mind of Christ. What did He say? I command you, arm yourself with the mind of Christ. The greatest weapon that we have is being able to think and to act biblically. And scripturally. Let's pray. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ for your grace and your mercy in our lives. Teach us, fill us up in the most holy faith, and enable us, Lord, to think more scripturally, more biblically, and to bring our lives, our thoughts, our actions into greater conformity to your word. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.